Hi, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. Um, my name's Adam Lisbon, and I'm at the University of Colorado Boulder. And uh, like, like we've said, we're going to be introducing uh, Japan knowledge to everybody. And I hope that this presentation uh, is great for those of you who are newer to the database and you learn a lot about the core features and how it's arranged. And for those of you that are more familiar, I hope that some of the examples we give uh, kind of renew some interest in it and also give you new ideas about how you might show this database to your students and faculty or, or use it in class for teaching. Um, so I hope that the experienced users gain some new insights from this. So just to kind of briefly go over what we're doing today, this is sort of the long list of topics that I'm hoping to cover. And each topic is going to be explored more deeply through a combination of slides and using the Japan Knowledge Database in real time. So all of my mistakes will also be there for you to see and we'll navigate those together. Um, I'll be using several different ideas for research topics to show examples of how to search and how to use some of Japan Knowledge's most important features. So we'll be presenting everything in sort of these made up research topics that I've prepared for this presentation. So uh, to start with accessing Japan Knowledge, I wanted to just go over this briefly with everybody, but do not try to access Japan Knowledge by Googling it. Uh, as you can see in the slide here, the URL to access Japan Knowledge is actually unique to the university and of uh, the campus that you're on. So here is our, our URL at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, for this presentation, a, a password and username was put into the chat for you to use, so feel free to use that and experiment and try to follow along if you want, and I hope that you'll use that to sort of explore the database more on your own time as well. Um, normally, you'll access the database through your library's website or the library catalog, and your library may have a portal for all the databases you have access to where you can search for Japan Knowledge by name. Or maybe you're able to search it directly in your library's catalog. That works too, depending on your library. If you aren't sure where to go, you can email your librarian or your library's general help email, and they'll be more than happy to give you a hand getting to the database. You should also find out if your university uh, requires you to use VPN access to use Japan Knowledge. Sometimes you can just log in from off campus. Sometimes you need a VPN to do it. If you're not sure, that's another question that you can ask your librarian or send to your library's help email. So with those basics out of the way, let's jump in a bit more. So what's actually in Japan Knowledge is a bunch of stuff. The graphic on the right is a list of all the potential sources you can search. You can't read it because it's so big that I had to shrink it down. But Japan Knowledge has around 80 resources that can be searched at once. Many of them are dictionaries and encyclopedias, but a lot of them are very special in some way and kind of atypical of what we might think of as a dictionary encyclopedia. They're focused on one topic, one type of literature, one era of history, things like that. And you can search, um, you can search all of these resources at once, allowing you to approach a research topic from a diverse range of perspectives, or you can select just a couple if you think only a few resources will actually give you more relevant results. The resources you'll have access to will vary a little bit depending on what your university subscription looks like. And you can also see that Japan Knowledge does include ebooks, giving you the opportunity to read some full text digital versions of important literary collections, historical primary sources, and some famous periodicals as well. And we're going to go over some of these examples throughout the presentation together. With so many different resources in Japan Knowledge, it's useful to know where you can read more about what exactly is available. At the top of the page, there is a link called Contents, or in Japanese, Kontentsu, and you can check there to see uh, detailed descriptions of all the different resources. And the more familiar you are with the different reference works in Japan Knowledge, the more you can plan and innovate and create research strategies that yield useful information for your projects. Another thing to note is that your starting page can vary. Um, the interface can be set to English or Japanese. Um, and from this slide onward, I'll be using Japan Knowledge with the Japanese interface and referring to most resources by their Japanese titles, occasionally translating here and there. Regardless of using the interface in Japanese or in English, the features and functionality and search results will be identical. So you can use it in whichever language you feel comfortable. You don't have to use it in Japanese if you feel more comfortable using it in English, or if you want to use it in Japanese because you want to be more familiar with the names and terminology and kanji, that's also great. So depending on your institution, you might end up at one of a few different landing pages. 
Uh, for example, the default homepage of Jamana doesn't have a search bar, so you have to click into the database a little more, and some people's uh, databases will start on the search page. It may also default to English or Japanese, depending on how it's been set up. So on this page, this is probably a more common homepage. This is what it is at my institution. There is a tab there at the top in Japanese, which says Gakko Kenkyu Kikan Deno Goryo, um, which is, means institutional subscription, basically. And if you click that, that'll kind of take you into your first opportunity to search. You'll also see right away there is a search bar there too. Having Japan knowledge in Japanese on the home page is useful because it does have some content not available in English. Uh, through the contents available, if you're in Japanese, are a what's new section that's only available in Japanese. And there is another section called uh, Chiski no Izumi, or Fountain of Knowledge, that is, uh, it's for, let me show you. So this is the Japan Knowledge homepage, and here is my very large mouse cursor for you to follow along with. But if you scroll down, you'll get to this uh, Chishiki no Izumi page. And this is useful for new graduate students who need more exposure to academic Japanese. And these articles are interesting reads that are more approachable than what you might read in a scholarly monograph or a journal article. And naturally, many of the articles incorporate how to use resources found in Japan knowledge. But there's some really interesting stuff here. There's one called um, Kogo to Bungo, so spoken versus written Japanese and things like that. Like they have little ones that you can read that are really good for students if they're sort of looking for ways to practice their, their Japanese, especially reading and kanji, and sort of it's contextual to doing more research. So just to kind of go over the search features at large uh, on the interface, there are four main ways that you can search. So all the way to the left is the Kihon Kensaku, or the simple search. Then next is the advanced search, the Shosai Kensaku. And then there's also the Hondana or bookshelf. And we're going to go through the presentation to show all of these. The fourth way to search is you can just start with the search bar right away, which that small search bar, it just defaults to a basic search. So welcome to the Japan Knowledge Basic Search. We can finally get into some interesting features Japan Knowledge has. The most important thing on this page is the Kensaku Contents box on the left. It's the large box I have outlined in red. Uh, I prefer to think of it as a searchable contents filter. By default, Japan Knowledge will look for your search term in every resource it has to offer, and that's easily over a million different entries across many reference works and full text books. So I'm going to go back up here and click on the simple search. And I want to show you this is the database in real time. So over here on the left is the contents box of all the different resources. And if I scroll down, you can see that there's a very long list of different resources. So this can be very intimidating the first time that you start to use Japan knowledge. You have the ability to choose what books Japan Knowledge will search. Right now, all the sources are selected by default, and you can see that there are broad categories. So at the top here, we have hyakka, or encyclopedias. Then we have nihongo, which actually means Japanese language dictionary, so uh, Japanese for Japanese, essentially. Um, and there's many, many more examples of different sections. We have rekishi and chime, which is history and maps or cartography, geography. So, for example, just to do a really simple search, I'm going to go ahead and just in the in the search bar, I'm going to search for welfare, and I'm going to run my search. And you'll see that um, if you look to these, so here's some initial results. There's 133. If you look to the right in gray, you'll see that this is the source that this entry is coming from. It's a little hard for me to highlight, but it's it's this text here. And many of these actually are, uh, Jap are they're, uh, dictionaries, bilingual dictionaries, Japanese and English, Japanese and German, Japanese and Italian, et cetera. So this isn't really what I'm looking for. I want to do research on welfare in Japan. So I'm going to actually do one more search again, and I'm going to switch to Fukushi. Oops. Don't mind my spelling errors or my kanji errors. 
And we can see here that we start to get a few different things now. And uh, what I can do with this is I still get the, I get even more, I get 467 results, but I kind of want to look more at like statistics on welfare in Japan. And so I know because I've learned this database fairly well, I can scroll down to a section called for statistics right here, Toke and Nenkan. And this is where I could find useful information on Japan. So if I click this section, I'm only going to look at these four resources in the database now. And now you can see I get statistical information from 2020, 2019, 2021 on welfare for children at welfare, uh, welfare services and things like that. Can even click in and just kind of take a quick look just to show you what happens. So my, my window is a bit zoomed in, so it'll look a little nicer if you don't zoom in like I have. But of course, you can um, look at the contents, see that there's quite a lot in here, uh, zoom in on the document to make it more readable, etc. So I'm going to go back, though. All right, and so now let me hop back to my slides here. So I want to start with a simple topic to explore Japan knowledge with. Uh, Let's say you're a new graduate student and in one of your seminar classes, you're gonna be focusing on joruri uh, in, one of, in one of the lessons. And it's an area of Japanese literature you aren't as familiar with, so you wanna be more prepared, or maybe you start to fall in love with joruri as you learn more about it in your seminar and you become really interested in it. So you wanna be able to do more research on it. So let's just start simple and do a simple search for joruri. So you can see here, um, so joruri is a form of narrative chanting accompanied with a shamisen, um, and it's often associated with bunraku, which is puppet theater. And looking at these search results, I want to clarify what it means to search with a midashi. So this is midashi. You're, you're telling what kind of search you want to do here before you click the search button. So a midashi, uh, Japan knowledge will translate it into English as headword, which does make sense, but I prefer to think of it as the title entry, because the only text you are searching is the title of the entries. So you can see that Midashi branches out to these red boxes. When you run a Midashi search, this is the only text that the search is looking at. It doesn't look at any of this text in the body of the article at all. So it's a kind of a simple search, but it does have its uses. It's really helpful and I do recommend it. So let me go back to Japan knowledge. So I'm going to put uh, Joruri Oops, again, as soon as I can spell it right. And I'm going to run my search. And um, actually, I just got no results. So when this happens, what probably happened is you have to clear your filters. So you may remember earlier, I had set the filter to uh, the statistics and yearbook section. And not surprisingly, there's not a lot of modern statistical data on Doherty. So there's no results. So you can just hit reset, and now it's going to search everything again. And this is a common thing that I do all the time, and I have to remember to reset my filters quite often. So now we get lots of results here. Um, so let's take a deeper look at what we have here. And again, just to reemphasize, if you look to the right in this light gray text here, again, it's hard for me to highlight it, um, that tells you the source type. And as you get more familiar with the sources, that can be really helpful and it kind of indicates what sort of information you're gonna see. But people always tend to look at the first result. So let's go ahead and see what this is. And this source, by the way, is called the Zenbun Zenyaku Kogo Jiten or a classical Japanese dictionary. Um, and it does give a description of Joruri, kind of what it was. And so, uh, uh, let me see here. So what it says here is, Ningyo, uh, Ningyo geki de shamisa ni awasete kataru katarimono, murumachi jidai ni dekita. And then actually, so this word is kind of giving me a little bit of trouble. So, which isn't surprising dealing with stuff that's older. I tend to have more, more moments where I'm not sure what it says or how to pronounce something. And so when you run into this situation, what you can do is there's this feature here called Knowledge Searcher, and it's Knowledge Searcher whether you're using the Japanese or English interface. If I click it and I go over and I hover, it searches the highlighted text in Japan Knowledge for you, and it produces lots of uh, results for you. And so what I can tell from the first result is that it is actually um, 
Minamoto no Yoshitsune's childhood name. So that kind of clarifies things for me. And if I scroll down a little bit here, you can see that there's actually many results and you can click through the results and see the different uh, sources that it's coming from. So you have the Kokushi Daijiten, History Encyclopedia, the Nihongo, Nihongo Kokugo Daijiten, like uh, Encyclopedia Nipponica in English, and it goes on and on. So this can be a really helpful tool to start figuring things out. Let me jump back to our search results. So the next entry is from the Nihon Daihyaka uh, Zensho, which is basically a, a large dictionary, or sorry, a large encyclopedia, or the Encyclopedia Nipponica. Um, this is a comprehensive encyclopedia of Japanese history and culture, and it has great historical summaries. It goes over people and performances. Uh, it has a historical summary of Joruri, and it has, goes over the people and performances and major developments of Joruri. And what I'd really like to point out is, of course, you have the article and it has subsections that you can look at. But one thing that I always recommend is when you're looking at things, make sure to pay attention to what is on the right, because this is where I, I like to say this is where all the bonus content is hidden. Um, this is, uh, so let me take, show you what this is. So the first thing you're going to see here is the Zengo Komoku. So this is just the uh, alphabetical or Goju Onzu order of entries in the dictionary. So you can see there's Joruri, there's Joruri Ji, Joruri Hime Monogatari. So you can see these related articles because they have similar names, of course. Then, of course, you have the table of contents for the article itself. And then what I really like is you don't always get this, but sometimes there will be media. Usually the media just means there's an image. Um, and this is a particularly cool piece of reference. I really like this because what it shows you is it's sort of the like trends and schools of Joruri that emerged and where they came from and how they've evolved and who sort of was inspired by whom, who was taught by whom. And I think this is a really great resource to have so that you know all the important uh, groups involved with Joruri right away. So it's always worth it to kind of investigate in um, the Daihaka Zensho what uh, they kind of talk about in it. And a quick point I'd also like to make is, of course, even in even graduate students and even faculty, sometimes we have a tendency to go check Wikipedia or just have a quick look. And I think this is a really good example of uh, the English article, at least. The Japanese is different, but the English article is quite disappointing. Whereas uh, if you're, you know, if you're working with undergrads and you want to introduce them to Joruri and have them look at it a little bit, there is the, the Encyclopedia of Japan, which is a great English language source. And this is actually more substantial than what's in Wikipedia. And I think that uh, this is a much better approach to exploring topics in Japanese than students kind of fleeing to Wikipedia. So if you have undergrads, you can direct them to this resource in the Japan Knowledge Database, something I highly recommend. Okay, so I want to do a another search and we're going to use another search topic as an example. So this time I want to explore Hoso Geki or which translates to radio dramas or radio plays, radio performances, things like that. And here I did my Midashi search or my title entry search and I only got nine results. So this isn't a lot really to kind of of learn anything new about. And so what I might recommend is a different approach to searching in this situation, because I'm exploring a new topic broadly. So I'm going to recommend a full text search, and that is uh, Zenbun in Japanese. And when we do a full text search, the results jump up to 128. So a full text search, uh, as you can see, it will find the word Hosogeki in the title entries of the um, of the articles, but it also can look into the body of the articles too now. So now it's looking everywhere. And in this case, all of the many of these articles, all of these articles begin with Hoso Geki, but we'll see in a moment that there will be articles that don't have that in the title at all, and you would never find them without doing the full text search. <clears throat> so I'm going to catch up to my own slides here for a moment and jump back. And actually, I can just start a new search right here. This will be a, a simple search again. Um, so let's see, whole, yeah, whole solo geki. So I've done it. And again, I did the Midashi search, only nine results. I'm just going to switch it and search again. 
And you can see that here we get it right away. But the, the nature of these searches right now is you get a lot of language dictionary entries. And that isn't quite what I want to look at. But um, there's so there are ways you can uh, make your searches a bit more effective. So I wanted to point out again, oops, I, I'd like to point out again that it is important to take the time to become a bit more familiar with Japan knowledge. And you don't have to do it all at once, but over time, slowly but surely, you start to kind of recognize what resources there are. And different topics are covered more thoroughly in different reference works. And since I don't want to see bilingual dictionaries in my results, um, I'm going to do some filtering to kind of take them out. But I do want to point out that Japan Knowledge is a useful online dictionary, and it's a totally a great way to use the database. So when we go back, I'm going to start with the search contents box. The search contents box is really important for filtering your results. You'll notice after searching that the numbers have, that there are gray bubbles with numbers in them, this 19, 19, 0, 15, et cetera. So I'm going to focus my energy on reference works or groups of works with a high count. So in the Hyaka group, there are 19 results. And I'm just going to click on this. And of course, there's only one, the Encyclopedia of Japan is in English, so they don't have an entry for this in particular. But um, and their head word would usually be in English, though they have Japanese after them in that. So we can see here that we get um, some results right away. The first one is just um, pointing out that another word for Hoso Geki is Radio Dorama. So that's another term you could be using to search in the database, another way to expand your results. Um, but let's take a look at some of the different results. So I'm just going to look at result four here. And this is Uchimura Naoya. So there's his name in kanji. And of course, sometimes Japanese names can be tricky. So you have the hiragana, the phonetic below it to read. And you'll see that um, here he it talks about this individual and that he was a pioneer in radio drama. And it's not particularly long, but you have a chance to consider like looking into this person more from other sources now that you know he exists. And you'll remember that in our search, we had done Hoso Geki as the search term. So here it is highlighted in yellow. Oops, I still got my knowledge searcher on. And then I just want to check, is there any bonus goodies on the right? And there are a few. So there's related contents. So I can see somebody, look at someone else who's related to this person. So I get to explore the topic more because I'm thinking about Hoso Geki and the people involved. Um, and then I've also got references. So here are secondary or primary references I might be able to go to to learn more about this person as well. Um, and these are the references used to write the article in the, in the Daihyaka Zensho. So that's really helpful to have. Jumping back to the results. And the thing I want to point out too is that when you do a full search, full text search, you tend to get a lot of, you start to see a lot of relationships. So um, Hoso Geki is not in the title, but it's in the text of the entry. So you're seeing people that are connected in some way to radio dramas, whether they're creators, uh, they might have run organizations related to Hoso Geki, they might have been voice actors. You can also sometimes find a few obituaries, things like that. Um, so just jumping into the fifth result. Uh, this is Osanai Kaoru, and this one's a bit more substantial. We've got a picture this time. Again, we have another related article, and we have references again to look at. So, and of course, there's Hoso Geki. Sorry, my cursor is changing so much. There's Hoso Geki highlighted here. We have a pretty substantial article. Again, this is another person who is described as a pioneer in radio drama. And I want to jump back one more time. And so there are quite a few entries here that might surprise you. I thought it was interesting when I did this search and I was exploring the topic more that I came across result seven, which is Kimi no Nawa. And that of course is the 2016 blockbuster by Makoto Shinkai. And if this is not that, this is actually a famous radio play that was done. It was a three-parter um, and it was later turned into a, a, a series of three movies as well. So, but no relation to the anime movie from 2016. So I'm going to um, unclick the Hyaka group up here. I want to explore other groups and see what other resources there might be. So I'm going to unclick Hyaka or Encyclopedia. And now you can see all the bubbles appear again. I can start to explore the different resources. Um, so the next set that has a lot in it, if I scroll down, I can see there's a few here, um, a lot in the language dictionary section, which I want to skip. Um, and 
And ah, here we go. So this section right here, um, Jinmei Bunka Shukyo, or People, Culture, and Religion, I want to look at this one. And so I can certainly click into uh, Filter Down and only expose that group. I get 57 results. Um, and I want to look at my uh, sources just one more time here. Yeah, and I can click these and um, we're going to get a lot of names because it's we're, we're talking about people dictionaries right now. The ones that actually have results are all sort of like a who's who kind of a dictionary. So these are all the who's who of radio dramas. And it's uh, mixed in with a couple of different sources. Um, so you can see that we've taken a new topic that we don't know anything about, and we've got a much better idea of who might be connected to it. And now that we do know that these people exist, we have a little bit of background on them, we can take that information and use it in sources like CNE, library catalogs, WorldCat, JSTOR, et cetera. And of course, some sources are going to appear a lot more often than others. Um, depending on what you're searching for. And those studying Japanese literature and Japanese history can expect to see a lot of these kinds of reference works appearing a lot of the time. And again, just re-emphasizing to become familiar with these resources over time. So an example of if you're kind of more aware of the resources in Japan and the way you can strategically start to think, I'm sorry, resources in Japan knowledge, the way you can start to think strategically is I want to find out which foreigners might have been influ influenced by Hoso Geki or radio broadcasting from Japan. So I'm kind of looking for the experience of influence. And so uh, this resource, the Seikai Bungaku Daijiten, it's actually mostly for not Japanese people. It's for people who are famous outside of Japan. And so I'm going to use this resource to kind of figure out Japanese influence in the world on the topic of Hoso Geki. Um, and so how do we create this search? So I'm going to go back to my um, Japan knowledge, and I'm just going to go ahead and I like to reset my filters. This is a habit I have. And what I'm going to do is I instead of selecting the group, this group of people, culture, and religion, I want to pick just the one uh, the one resource, the Seikai Bungaku Daijiten. And I'm going to click that. And I know all these resources, res, results have Hoso Geki in them, but I want, again, I want to learn about the influence and connection with Japan. So I'm going to actually add another term. And I'm just going to add the word Japan to my search and search that. And so now you'll see that I get only four results. And you'll see that Hoso Geki is in yellow. And my second word, Nihon or Japan, is in orange. So it starts to show you all the different terms you're searching in your search results. So there's only four results, but I think this is really helpful because if you look, you'll see even in the second, or actually in the, yeah, in the uh, second results here, this uh, gentleman here who is, I haven't even opened the article, but I know that he wrote a collection of poems called uh, This is German, and it translates to English as Japanese Escalator. Um, so what I would then do is, uh, uh, but what I do want to show you is the fourth result here. So we have uh, this one, I'm going to click it. So this one is an entry about um, Bertolt Brecht. So sometimes I struggle with katakana names for non-English speakers. And it's nice that you just get the uh, German or Swedish or French name as well uh, when you, once you open the art entry. And so I want to find, it's actually quite a long article. I'm kind of scrolling through it fast because it does go on for so long. But I want to find the uh, mention of Hoso Geki in this. And here it is. Sorry for my cursor going crazy there. But here's Hoso Geki. And so what I can see is if I read in this section, I can start to understand that he was actually really inspired by no play. So, and that he actually does have a history in broadcasting. So I'm curious if in his broadcasting career in Germany, if no plays influenced that somehow, if I can find a connection in some way to that. Um, and so this is a good chance that to, um, I might want to hold on to this information, actually. And so a lot, what I'm going to do is I want to demo uh, uh, the citation feature in Japan Knowledge. So really quick, this is just a quick example of how to uh, cite uh, in Japan Knowledge, or pull notes, I should say. So here is that article before, and here's the section that I was just showing you live on the database itself. Um, and what I want to do is I want to pull, it, this is about uh, how Brecht was influenced by a Japanese no performance, it's called Taniko. Um, and to do this, I'm going to use the Japan Knowledge Citation tool to keep track of this information because I think it's interesting. And so you have this feature right here, Inyo Moto 
and I'm actually forgetting how to pronounce this one character, I apologize. Um, I think it's Sai, Sai Nyu Kino, um, but uh, it'll say citation in English. And what I want to do is I'm going to highlight the text I want to grab as a note for, and then I'm going to just kind of save it in a Word document. One thing to point out about this feature is that um, it works in Chrome and it works in Microsoft Edge. It does not work in Firefox, and I don't have the graphic up, but we also know that it does not work in Safari. So unfortunately, to use this tool, you do have to use one of these two uh, 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 internet browsers. So let me just kind of demo this for you live. So I have to actually go back up, turn on the citation tool, and then I'm going to go back down. And yeah, so here is the, and actually this is the, the information I want to take with me. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to copy it, and I get this notification that the browser has accepted it. And so if I go to something like Microsoft Word, I get a, uh, a citation, if you will. So one thing I do want to point out is that it is it, it is a citation, but it doesn't match any of the North American standards. So if you so this isn't really for like actually doing citations with it doesn't do it in APA or Chicago or MLA style citation. It's really more for your personal notes. That's a better way to think about it. But it's just a way to hold on to like the interesting parts that you're reading and where they came from precisely and things like that. So don't expect this to follow a standard citation format. Um, just something for everybody to know about this. And let me go back to my slides. So I'm going to touch on the advanced search now. So we're going to construct a more sophisticated search, and I'll show you how that all works. Uh, so just to go over a few things here. Um, so there is, of course, the red box. We're going to skip this for the moment, and we'll deal with it later because it, it's kind of a special function. It sort of dictates what resources you'll search exactly. We'll touch on it later. Then, of course, your, there's your standard search terms, and you get three different boxes to work with. You also get something called Boolean operators, which I think many of the librarians know, um, but not so much the, um, but maybe other people are less familiar with or kind of familiar with, and we'll touch on this uh, in a little bit too. There's search scope, as well. And then, of course, scope of texturing. And these are kind of abstract descriptions. And it's easier to show you in a search what's, hap what's happening. There's also the phrase search, which is not very useful if you're searching in Japanese. It's really only for foreign languages. Um, and I'll kind of demonstrate very quickly what this is in a, in a moment when we go to do a search. Um, and actually, let me demonstrate the phrase search right now. But if I go back to the top, so if, for example, I search United States, What I get is you'll see that I, the first entry is not United States at all. I get United, United Arab States, not the United States. If I click phrase search, it treats the, um, it's right now what it's doing is it's only looking for the word United and the word States anywhere. But if we make it phrase search, you'll see that it combines them together. And so now you explicitly get United States. So something to be aware of, it's really only useful if you're not searching in Japanese, which is not our focus for this presentation, but just to show you what that is. Um, okay. So for our example, I want to mix and match some search terms, and I'm going to do a search on Matsuo Basho. I'm researching Basho. And uh, if I did a title entry search, I would get 14 results, very introductory kinds of materials. And if I do a full text search, I'll get 705, which is great. That's a lot of, of interesting um, things to look through. But I might want to add some kind of focus to my research. Usually uh, faculty are not searching like, I'm going to write a book on Basho. We, there's usually something more specific intended by that. And so the theme I'm thinking is, I want to really focus on Basho visiting religious sites and what, which of his poems are sort of related to religious sites, what happened on his visits to them, things like that. That's what I'm curious about. And so if I go to the next slide, um, so I'm going to construct a search to do just that. And I have color coded the search with the text below. So the red here matches the red here, the orange here matches the orange, etc. So what I'm saying in this search is find a entry with Matsuo Basho anywhere in the text and find 
me an entry, find the, uh, the, end, the title of the entry must end in the character for Buddhist temple or G or Tera. Um, and this is how I say, like, look at the, and because I know that Japanese religious sites often end with specific suffixes, I'm saying, make sure that this is saying is, oops, sorry. What this is saying is make sure that the title entry ends in the character Tera. That's how this is kind of constructed. Um, so let me jump in. So here are the results. You can see that all the entries end in the kanji for Buddhist temples. So uh, end in temple. And each of these entries finishes with temple. And you may notice that uh, the entries don't actually end with temple. There's more text after that. That is actually like bonus text in the title of the entry that's provided sort of by Japan Knowledge. So it tells you right away that this place, Ioji, is in Fukushima Ken, in Fukushima Shi, et cetera, et cetera. So this is sort of like bonus information they've included, but the true title entry is just this part here. Kind of a quirk of the system you have to be aware of. It's sort of that something you get used to after using the uh, database a long time. So to go back here, I'm going to go catch up to my own slides again. I'm going to go to the advanced search and I'm going to There it is. And yep, Zenbun and Tera in the heading. And I want it to be the end. And I don't need phrase search on, so I'm going to turn that off. And this should run correctly. 43 results. OK, yes. So I got where I wanted to be. So let me zoom down into here. So we can see. Uh, a lot about the places uh, Basho has visited now. So if I look at the first result for Iyoji Temple, I can just open that up. And it's a pretty uh, interesting entry about him and his visit there. And you can see that it uh, kind of talks about like the poem he wrote there, things like that. This is the Nihon Rekshi Chime Taike or uh, Dictionary of Important Historical Places. And as an additional bonus, always look at the right side. That's my philosophy in Japan knowledge. Like, look at the bonus material. You'll see here that you get some extra maps. And these are all related to Fukushima Prefecture because that's where this temple is in modern day Japan. So there's um, just a couple of different maps like this one, Shizen Chime to <coughs> Dosuji. It is uh, kind of like a place of historically important, like natural names, things like that, like natural sites, nature sites. So I think they have some interesting uh, maps you can look at as well. jump back. And so, of course, there's um, what you can do with a topic like this. Oh, and uh, yeah, sorry. And what you can do with a topic like this is you're able to kind of explore different resources in different ways. So you can kind of pick resource by resource and explore them. So I want to talk about the Nihon Shin Yampyo for a moment um, and uh, show you what it's like. And of course, there's the Kokushi Daijitan, which you've looked at a little bit before. Uh, so jumping back in, I'm going to go back to my search results. And I'm not going to find the Nihon Shin Nyempyo. So I'm actually going to pick this one source here, load it up. And I have all of my specific search criteria here. I'm just going to clear all of that. I'm going to get rid of everything. Now, because the Nihon Shin Nyempyo is a chronology, it's logical to assume that they have entries by year. So Basho was born in 1644. So I'm going to start to investigate historically important events that have taken place from the time Basho was born up to when he started writing poetry and through that time frame, just to compare like what was happening in Japanese history at the time when he was doing his poetry and on his uh, travels. And so here's the entry for 1644. Of course, there's only one. And you can see that it gives the imperial years along with the uh, sexagenary cycle years or the etto. I'm just going to click in to show you this. And so here you have, oh, I wanted this turned off actually. So here we have the entry. And um, there's, it's short, but you can look at the, as you build up through the years, you start to see lots of different things that have happened. So one thing that's really great, and again, always look on the right for the bonus content, is uh, this particular resource, I have not seen this in other resources, has a furigana uh, toggle, which is fantastic because for pre-modern Japanese names, I really struggle to read them. So I'm so grateful for this feature in this one resource. 
Uh, and you can see here, of course, on the entries, I can start to go year by year and click directly. Um, there's some extra information on like the emperor, things like that, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see that this breaks down by politics and e economics. Then it goes to society and culture and then deaths and obituaries of like important people. And there's also what's happening in the world why, outside of Japan as well. So to continue, I really like to show my bonus content. And actually this resource has lots of reference sources that are really good to have on hand. And I'm gonna highlight one, the Hoi Jikokuhyo. So I'm gonna open this up and show this. This is, if for those of you who are maybe not as familiar with the sexagenary cycle, you may know that there's the 60 year cycle, right? We talk about often saying like the Chinese new year. Um, this is essentially, uh, this information condensed down and it shows you how this cycle works and operates. It breaks down times of day. I remember when I was an undergrad and I was reading the pillow book, they would say things like the hour of the rat or the hour of the ox. And I had no idea what they were talking about. And if I had had this chart, it would have made a lot more sense. Um, so this is here to help you sort of get through how years and time was counted in Japan and, and China too, too uh, as well. Um, so this is really helpful. And of course, I always forget the names of the years. So it's very nice to have this as well. When I see them, I always check this chart really quick. I look at it so often that I've downloaded it and just have it on hand to use. So let me close out of that. Go back to my slides. Um, next is let's talk about using Japan knowledge as an online dictionary. So there are many, many kinds of Japanese dictionaries in Japan knowledge. So there's the comprehensive uh, sort of Oxford English dictionary equivalents like the Nihon Kokugo Daijiten. And there's sort of typical more day-to-day -day stuff like the Daijisen uh, that kind of gives you quicker, faster de uh, definitions, much more consumable. Uh, there's kanji dictionaries. There's dialects and expressions dictionaries. There's a thesaurus you can look at. There are special, there's even a specialized dictionary for counting words, which is a new resource that they added. And we don't have, we do not have time to go through all of them. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is that the two dictionaries with white stars, this one and this one, are uh, they are not part of CU Boulder's subscription. They're a different cost to have access to. And I would like to point out that. Um, what Japan knowledge costs is really a negotiation between you and your in, or your institution in Japan knowledge. We can't really answer questions like that. Um, but I want to do some examples of searching in Japan knowledge and using it like a dictionary and, and how that can be approached. So you can use different dictionaries to search a common word to get information that you need. A real life example that I had of this was I have a student that I'm helping. He's doing doing or kind of final paper for one of his classes and he's exploring the history of marriage in Japan, especially just before and just after the Meiji Restoration. And I realized right away that probably kekkon was a more modern term and was curious about its history and was hoping to find maybe some information on the history of the term and what other terms were used to mean marriage. So I'm going to explore that as like a research idea. So I'll go back up. I'm just going to do a basic search here. And just to be safe, I'm going to reset my sources just to be sure. And we can see here, yeah, we have uh, Kekkon as, as the source, but the one I would like to focus on is here's the di digital Dajisen, which is a more kind of contemporary dictionary. It very clearly defines the word. I'm more interested in the history, so I'm going to use the Nihon Kokugo Daijiten. And when I click in, uh, the Daijiten gives a really great synopsis of the of the word and its meaning, and it goes kind of through history. And there's a section called Goshi. It's not in not every word gets a Goshi section, but it's basically the etymology section. And what I learned is that Konin was actually really the word that was more common before Kekkon was used. And so with that word, my student and I were able to find a lot more resources together. So this was just a really simple solution to a problem I saw right away that we needed to solve. And I was grateful that I had Japan knowledge to do it with. Um, let me see here. And I'd also like to check out the, the excuse me, the thesaurus uh, to see if there are other phrases commonly used that re, uh, refer to or allude to marriage, because those may have been used in older Japanese as well. So if I go back to the search results, um, I'm going to, so here's the Japanese section of dictionaries, and I want the thesaurus, the Karokawa Ruigo Shinjiten. 
And you'll see here right at the top, we've got Kekkon. So I'm just going to look at the first entry and bring it up. And here we see I have lots of different phrases used for uh, describing or alluding to marriage. So mio katameru, sou, uh, sou itogeru, sou, uh, tsu, tsureso. And I can open them up and sort of look at them, see examples, historical references, things like that. These give me more ways to think about how I might search for and understand this term and, and find new resources on, on marriage in historical contexts. And of course, if I'm back at the results, I can't go through every result, but there is um, uh, like a kotozawa, uh, which is like an expressions dictionary. There's a dialects dictionary that you can look at to see what other words people were using in Japan through time and place, things like that. I really encourage you to explore some of the dictionary resources on your own and kind of see how you can use them and utilize them because they have a really interesting set that you can take advantage of. Next is um, searching with classical Japanese. So I have two word words I'm going to use as examples. Um, so classical J Japanese dictionaries are kogo jiten. Uh, I'm going to do a search on beshi, and I have an extra word here, haberi. Uh, so both words are pretty common in pre-modern Japanese. Beshi means that someone should do something or you must do something. And haberi is an older word meaning to serve. And you may recognize the kanji as also being the one for samurai. Um, so let's kind of jump into it. <clears throat> so I'm going to search beshi, and I'm going to use the Zenbun Zenyaku Kogojiten, which is a classical Japanese dictionary. It's actually intended for high school students, and, but it's a great resource for graduate students who are new and starting out, especially if you're new to learning classical Japanese. I'm no expert myself, so I know I would need to use this a lot. Um, I've already brought up Beshi here in a slide for you to look at, and you can see that there are a variety of information. So you get uh, conjugation information here, um, just some grammatical notes, right? The first definition, an example sentence, and the source it came from, and then a modern translation of the example sentence. So just a lot to work with here. And then there's more definitions to slightly different uses of, of Beshi, Beku, like its conjugations and things like that. Uh, just to jump in really quick, actually, let me look up Beshi, and it does sort of come up. I want to use the Zenbun Zenyaku. I'm going to go in, and one thing I wanted to point out, a feature, I haven't pointed it out yet, but it is in every resource we've looked at. There is this button here called Hanre, and um, it's kind of like the, the explanatory notes of a book. And this is really useful to know because a lot of Japanese reference works have fairly sophisticated sets of symbols to quickly communicate important information. And it's well worth your time to be familiar with the information in the Hanrei section of a resource. So I do want this to, you just to be aware of this. There's usually a drop down, and it has the different sections of the Hanrei that you can go through kind of to understand different things. Um, but it's really handy to uh, be aware of that and kind of read through it. If you feel like a, a resource is hard to use, the Hanrei is probably a good item to check out and be sure of. And so the other thing I wanted to make sure I showed you is, let me show you this, is that, again, always look to the right. And the Zenbun Zenyaku is also one that is rich in bonus content, as I like to say. And so if I go back in... You can see if I go down, uh, yeah, bunpo shiyo. So this year, the uh, uh, the doshi katsuyohyo. This is basically a chart summarizing how to do classical Japanese verb conjugations. So really nice to have. Again, if you're new to classical Japanese, this is just great that it's here. It's something I would have downloaded if I were a new graduate student. Uh, something to keep in mind that there's kind of all these hidden treasures in these resources, but you have to not just go to the resource, but at least do one search to look at an entry and then find the bonus content on the right side. Um, so I would like to look, do another search. So I'm going to start a new search again. I'm going to look up um, Haberi this time. And this starts over with a new search for me. And I want to look in the Kokugo Daijiten. And here's the entry. 
at the top, hopping in. And so I get quite a link. This is a much more technical version of the Zenbun Zenyaku. So you get a lot of descriptions, a lot of definitions, and a lot of examples and the sources of those example sentences. It's quite lengthy. I think this one may not have a go. Oh, no, they do have a goshi section. So this one does have a goshi. So you can see that this is really, really extensive. So if you look up a classical Japanese word or a kogo, the kokogo, kokogo daijiten can be really helpful for that as well. And of course, uh, there are many, many dictionaries specializing in all kinds of things, not just language ones, but um, I think it's kind of neat that there is a dictionary of fictional and legendary characters. That's kind of my favorite, favorite one in the bunch, kind of neat. Um, and we definitely do not have time to demonstrate all of them, but again, take some time to kind of explore these and see what's available. But um, dictionaries just on Buddhist terms, just on no on Kyogen, on Kabuki, et cetera, things like that, um, could be really helpful if that's where your area of specialty is. All right. So next is the Hondana search. So the Hondana is, I like to think of it as, uh, it's, it's a bookshelf function, and it's kind of meant to recreate browsing a collection on a shelf. Uh, is sort of what it's designed to do. But I wanted to make sure you understood what this was. So this is Hondana. And keep in mind that what you see here, this is what CU Boulder sees, but you may see something different depending on your subscription or what your institution has access to. So today, earlier, uh, we're going to look at, uh, sorry, today we're going to look at the um, a collection of classical Japanese works called the Nihon Koten Bungaku Zenshu, and it's about 88 volumes of classical texts ranging uh, chronologically from antiquity to just up before the modern period. Um, there's a wide variety of genres covered here, and you can see that when you go to Hondana mode, uh, the left side changes. It's no longer the different sources because you're looking in one source, just the Koten Bungaku. It changes to a new set of filters, and so these filters are by era and by genre. So let me jump in here, uh, go back to the Japan Knowledge homepage, and actually let me click in so I can see. All right, and there's my Hondana. All right, so I'm going to click this. And here's my Nihon Koten Bungaku. And I'm in. All right, great. So uh, this is one of several ebook collections on Japan Knowledge. All 88 volumes are full text searchable, and that allows you to think about research topics in a new kind of way, looking for themes across the history of Japanese literature. Um, and the, Koton, the Koten Bungaku is one of several sources with its own custom advanced search options, which we'll touch base with in a moment. So the Hondana is a little different from the advanced search, but the advanced search does have um, when we do the adventures, you'll notice that there was this drop down that would appear. And so some resources have their own customized special advanced searches. And the Nihon Koten Bungaku is one of them. So I can go into it this way. And things change when you use these special custom advanced searches. So you'll see that the search scope parameters have changed. So before, when we search Japan knowledge generally, there's Midashi and Zenbun. We get uh, the title entry and the full text. But now we have new things that we can search. We have Koten Honbun, Sakuhime, and Gendai Goyaku. And we'll kind of get into what all of this is specifically. There's actually two more scopes you can use here that are unique to the Koten Bungaku. <clears throat> so as an example, I want to show a quick example search, uh, a simple search to do some basic analysis with. How many stories across all 88 volumes of the Koten Bungaku contain the word or the kanji for a woman in it, uh, onna? And so all I have to do is oops, switch to Japanese, of course, not Korean, but there we go, onna. And I'm going to actually filter by, uh, and if I go ahead and do the search initially, I get 240 results. But I want to know about the titles. So Sakuhime is title of a work. And here we go. I get some uh, results now. So let me show you these a bit more. So to be clear, the scope isn't just for the title of the volume, but for all the major titles throughout all of the volumes. For example, in these search results, there are 10 major titles that have onna in them. 
The first result of this title is that shows in the title is Otome, and it's in Genji no Monogatari. Corresponding to what would be the physical and Genji no Monogatari would be the physical version that this story would be in, or this chapter or section, I should say. So let's dig a little deeper. Let's say you want to explore earthquakes. Uh, and so we can kind of do that now. So I'm going to start with a basic search right away. Um, so I'm searching Jishin, earthquake, and I've chosen my scope to be subite or all, give me everything, doesn't matter what type of text it is, just search everything no matter what. Any instance of the word Jishin anywhere, no, no matter the kind of text, I will get those results. And I should get about 46 results to look through. So I'm going to go back up, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to search for Jishin. And I know that I'm actually going to look at the work, the Hojoki. Uh, that's the one I'd like to start with. And so I can start to browse through here, and I believe it's the 16th result. Um, oh, the 12th result, actually, in this case. So here it is, Hojoki. Um, but one thing you can do is if you're kind of aware of what it is you would like to be, uh, oh, that's right, okay, so Subete and Sakuhimi, title of the work, and then I'll just put in Hojoki, oops, as soon as I can spell correctly. And by doing that, I'll get just one result, so that's really helpful. Just a quick little shortcut sometimes you can use if you're more aware of what it is you're looking for. Uh, before we go into Japan's interface for ebooks, I want to briefly review the content of the Koten Bungaku just to better demonstrate how search scope works. So this is a page from the Koten Bungaku. This is um, a part of the Hojoki, the first uh, one of the pages that has earthquake on it. So that this is page twenty four, and. The way it's laid out is that the original text is in the center. So this is the original Hojoki, uh, how it was written. And then commentary and analysis are at the top. And then at the bottom, you have the modern translation. So this is modern Japanese uh, of the original Japanese, or the classical Japanese, I should say. You have the ability to search just this section as tochu. You have the ability to search just the original text as Koten Honbun, and you can search just the modern translation as Gendai Goyaku. Um, and I so far have found that I I'm comfortable searching all of them at once, but you may have specific reasons for just choosing one or the other. And what I'm I would like to uh, go to page 25 really briefly because I just wanted to point out one other thing. So if I go to page 24, this was the page I was just showing you on my screen. And I'm going to reduce the size of my interface back to normal. Yeah, here we go. Let me center this page, zoom in a little better. So here I have the, the text to read now. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out was that Earthquake, it appears as section six right here. But it also appears a lot in the modern translation. And sorry that my cursor isn't showing up so much. Uh, but this bottom portion, it says Jishin several times, but sometimes the modern translation at the bottom doesn't actually match completely the content at the top. So most of this modern translation on the bottom here is actually on the next page, on page 25. And I just wanted to point that out really quickly, was that when I did the Jishin search, um, the, uh, the Jishin in the modern translation on page 24, a lot of it is here in page... 25. And let me see if I can point that out really quickly. Um, oh yeah, so here's one instance, here's another, uh, and Jishin in classical Japanese is nai. And then yeah, here it is again. So these actually go back to the modern translation on page 24. So just something to be aware of when you're doing this kind of searching. Right, and I just need to leave the zoom drawing tool. All right. So here we can take a closer look at how Japan Knowledge navigates ebooks. You can jump between sections of any piece of literature in any volume, and you'll see that we're in section six. We're in the table of contents here.
And we also have the modern translation. So you can read it down here, but you can also see it as computer text up here. And you'll see the correspondence to all of the different uh, Jishin instances of earthquake in this case. Uh, the text here is copy and pasteable, and you can use Japan's uh, Japan Knowledge's knowledge searcher function, but you cannot use the citation function here. Um, sadly, there's no computerized text of the Hondun, the original text, or of the Tochu, the scholarly commentary, uh, which is unfortunate, but that is just a limitation of the database they have. But for example, here is the modern text. It's a little tricky for me to highlight with my giant cursor, but I can click knowledge searcher and um, it will, I've only highlighted one character, but you can see that it does work here actually. Sorry for the tiny text, but the ebook interface gets strange if I enlarge my browser a lot. So there's a lot of different ways you can consider approaching the uh, search, uh, searching a theme across all of the, the volumes of literature in the Koten Bungaku. And, and uh, to conclude with that, there, there's a great deal more that we could be doing. We come with many examples. So to uh, kind of review, Japan Knowledge will let you search across many sources at once, and it lets you target your searching in very precise ways if you want to do the filters and, change, and use the advanced search results. It lets you explore themes and area of interest and let a related content bubble up to the surface, like the wholesale geki example, the who's who and the what's what. Uh, and it's you, and there's a lot of really useful appendices, that bonus content on the right that I was talking about, uh, really worth exploring and discovering in the process. Um, this is just an introduction to Japan knowledge, and we've only shown you the tip of the iceberg. There's plenty more to explore. The more familiar you get with the different resources, the more you think about the way you can mix and match and combine them together, the more you can do. Um, and the more interesting search strategies you can develop, you can work with your librarian on that for sure. And thank you. Thank you for your time and for coming here. I hope everybody enjoyed this. And uh, we'll be doing a Q&A for a little bit. And I'm just really excited to see what follow-up questions people might submit later as well. So thank you again, everybody.